Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So we are going to get started this evening with the words of Shalom Aleichem, which the words talk about not only being in peace, we pray for peace a lot during our service, but really talking about the peace as we're coming and the peace as we're going, and we hope that each step along the way that we do so in peace, that we do so safely and with peace in our hearts. So we start with Shalom Aleichem. And a fun, a fun extra. <laughs> Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elyon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachi, Hakadosh, Hakadosh Baruch, Bochem Shalom, Malachi Hasharon, Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elyon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu Shalom, Malachi Hasharon, I am so excited that I finally get to be in person with the community of Temple Beth Torah. It's been a long time in coming, so I'm so glad that you are all here, either in person or by Zoom. It is a wonderful Shabbat to be together. It was a little warm, but I can already start to feel it calm, uh, cooling down, which from what I hear is apparently typical of <laughs> Fremont. I'm learning something new every day. Um, I just have a lot of gratitude for each and every one of you here. Um, and it's been a wild ride, but I am looking forward to continuing the ride together. We are going to bring uh, the Shabbat in through the lighting of the Shabbat candles. Um, and it is my pleasure to invite up Cheryl Cohen to light the Shabbat candles. Thank 
The meaning of the Sabbath is to celebrate time rather than space. Six days a week, we live under the tyranny of things of space. On the Sabbath, we try to become attuned to holiness in time. It is a day on which we are called upon to share in what is eternal in time, to turn from the results of creation to the mystery of creation, from the world of creation to the creation of the world. This might take a while. I don't, I don't do well with lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined to use the matches. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lehadlik Ner Lehadlik ne'er shall shabbat. So, on Shabbat, we celebrate that on, um, that after six days of creation that God rested on the seventh day. What's really interesting as we think about the light that we physically light, the Shabbat candles, is that there's actually two different types of light that is created in the story of creation. We have the first day, which is day and night, which has light and dark. And then later on, we have the sun and moon and stars. So. Where was this light coming from before we had the sun and moon and stars? A lot of different people have a lot of different answers, but what I bring to what I bring to that text is that the light that we talk about when we're talking about the sun and moon and stars, the physical light is pretty obvious we see it. The light that was created before is the light that we talk about when we sing the words or zarua lat sadiq will yishre lev simcha light is sown for the righteous we think about the incredible blessings that right that the wonderful people of our world when we're doing good that's bringing blessing to us and then hopefully we should receive blessings in return and i think that's the light that was originally created, the light that came before the physical light. So on page 131, you will find the words of Or Zarua, which is one of our Kabbalat Shabbat Psalms. Um, if you are familiar, please feel free to sing along. Um, if you're not, it catches on pretty quickly. So as you get to know it, feel free to sing along or just lie, 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 die, die, die. Whatever, those are some pretty easy words <laughs> to catch on. Yadada, yadada, yadada. Zavu alat sadik, ul 
We continue with the words of Lecha Dodi, which can be found on page 138. And we're actually going to move that down a little. Lecha Lecha Dodi, Likat Likat Kala, Bene Bene Shabbat Nekavela. Lecha Lecha Dodi, Likat Kala, Bene Bene Shabbat Nekavela. Shamor Vesachor Bedi Borechad, Ishmi Anu El Hameyuchad, Adonai Echad, Ushemo Echad. Please be seated. It is now it is now my pleasure to invite up Josh Cohen and Becca Weiss who are engaged and we are so excited um, we decided to take a moment to share a little blessing for them <laughs> it's almost like you grew up here or something <laughs> the only thing that's missing is for him to start walking around barefoot that's <laughs> that's what I used to do at my home congregation <laughs> so we moved from singing about the Shabbat bride with words of Lachado D to celebrating you two, um, a future bride and groom, an engaged couple Let's do it. Who, <laughs> who are special to the hearts of many in our Temple Beth Torah community. And so I want to share some words from another Hebrew love song. Hari'ini et mar'aich hashmini et kolech ki kolach arev me ar mar ech nave. Let me see your face and let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is beautiful. Ani lidodi vidodi li. 
I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. These words, which are found in Song of Songs, tell the story of an egalitarian love that celebrates which is beautiful in both partners. The unnamed characters are moved by their desire for one another and their desire to be together, despite it not always being a guarantee that they will be able to. After meeting in Israel at the, or the B'nai Mitzvah trip of Josh's sister and Becca's cousin, that fateful New Year's Eve in 2009, it was not always a guarantee that you both would be here today as you had been living in different parts of the country at the time. But there is a Hasidic legend that states, from every being there rises a light that reaches straight into the heavens, and when two souls that are destined to be together find each other, their streams of light flow together, and a single brighter light glows forth from their united being. Josh and Becca, how incredible it is that the light from both of your souls found their way to one another so that we can bask in the light of your unified, sorry, of it bask in the unified light that you bring to us tonight. Josh, you have shared your sweet voice in the words of Song of Songs and your music that has been such a blessing to our community. And so it's now my honor to share a blessing with both of you on this important step in your journey as a couple. May your new life together have many years of health, love, and joy. May you find the courage to affirm one another and in gentle trust to unfold to each other your deepest selves, your strength, your vulnerability, your yearning and your secret pain, and your most tender love. We pray not that you may have happily ever after because it doesn't exist. Rather, we, we who care for you pray that you be granted a generous measure of blessing. And the years opening up before you, may there be an abundance of moments like this when all who are touched by your life are filled with hope. May the years be kind to you, and may the sweet goodness you already know grow deeper and stronger with the passing time. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. We continue with the words of Baruch Hu on page 146. Please rise. be seated. We are on page 148. The words that you will um, not see on page 148 
our English, it says, roll into dark, roll into light, night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into light, night becomes day, day turns to night. Roll into dark, roll into light, night becomes day, day turns to night. For page 152 for the words of Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Ma Leolam vaed Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol avavcha uvechol nafshecha Uvechol meodecha Ve'hayu hadvarim ha'ela Asher anochi metzavecha, hayom alevavecha, veshinantam levanecha, vedibarta bam, veshivtecha bavetacha, uvlechtecha vaderech, uvshochbecha uvkumecha. Ukshartam leot al yadecha, vehayule totafot bene necha, uchtav tam al mezuzot betecha, uvisharecha, leman tiskeru, vasitem et komit votai, vitem kedoshim lelohechem. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Asher Hotzeiti Etchem, Me'eretz Mitzrayim, Lihiot Lachem, Elohim, Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem, Emet. It's now my pleasure to invite up, uh, oh my gosh, where did my sheet go? Jack Samoski for our next reading. Reflection on truth and faith. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. There is no better place a promised land that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together.
So as some of you may have learned from services last week, there won't be a pop quiz, I promise. Um, my favorite blessing of all of the blessings is the Hashki Venu because, can anybody guess? Anybody remember? Somebody said it, I love sleep. <laughs> That's right. So this is a prayer that asks God that we are able to lie down, that we're able to get to sleep tonight, and that we're able to wake up in the morning refreshed and renewed, excited to do whatever it is that we are supposed to do tomorrow, whether it is going on a walk or going grocery shopping because we've been meaning to all week and we just haven't gotten around to it, or whatever it is that we are meant to do on Shabbat morning or any morning really, this is something that comes up in even our weekday liturgy, we do want to take a moment to think about the rest that we need. There is no better time to think about Shabbat than rest, our day of rest. So I want us to take a moment, take, take a deep breath in, and think about a moment of rest that you're hoping to get this Shabbat. Give a new Adonai Eloheinu le shalom Behamideinu shomreinu lechaim Spread shelter of your peace over us. Guide us in wisdom, compassion, and trust. Hush, give
as we continue with the tefillah, the core of our service, uh, part of the service that our ancestors who put together our sidur said, these are the prayers that are so important to us that we need to make sure that no matter what, at almost every single service, we remember our ancestors, we remember how great God is, and we remember about holiness, and we remember about peace, and there's a few other things in there, um, you know, as doors go. Um, <laughs> and so we will be doing those prayers, but I also want to offer a moment for each of us to think about what are the prayers that we want to make sure that we include before we're done praying this evening, whether it's been something that's been on your heart for a while or something that has just been on your mind today, whatever it is, your prayer is important too. So take a moment, think about what that prayer is. And when you're ready, please feel free to rise and turn to page 164. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi agitehi latecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe avoteinu, v'imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Velohe Leha. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora el elyon gomel chasadim tovim v'kone ha'kol v'zocher chaste avot v'imahot v'mevi ge'ula livnei v'neihem l'ma'an shemo be'ahava melech ozer u'moshia u'magen Baruch atah Adonai, Magin Avraham v'ezrat Sarah. Atah gibor le'olam Adonai, Mechaye ha'kol atah rav le'hoshia. Morid ha'tal, Mechal kel chayim b'chesed. Mechaye ha'kol b'rachamim rabim. So mech nofim v'rofe cholim. Umatir asurim. Umekayim emunato. Lishene afar. Micha mocha ba'al givurot. Umido melach. Melech me mi to mechaye, u mats mi a chishua, vene manatala ha chayota ko, Baruchata Adonai, mechaye ha ko, Ata kadosh, vishim ha kadosh, ukadoshim beho yom ya halleluha sela. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Please be seated. We pray for peace on page 178. Shalom rahav al Yisrael amcha dasi. Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Ki Ata Hu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Ki Ata Hu Melech Adon Lechol HaShalom Shall 
We take this moment for our own silent prayer. on page 180. Yeah, he I want to tell you about something called FFTs. I learned about them a while ago when I began listening to one of my now favorite podcasts, Unlocking Us with Brene Brown. 
While the idea of FFTs made a lot of sense as she explained them back then, back then, recently I have come to see FFTs everywhere. This actually all fits in very nicely, you'll see in just a moment. However, before explaining what FFTs are, let me share a little bit of a, the context about who this person is who coined the term. Dr. Brene Brown is a research professor, a leadership educator who has worked with organizations spanning from Fortune 100 companies to the US military to the listeners of her other podcast, Dare to Lead, and an author of five number one New York Times bestsellers. For the, for the past 20 years, her research has focused on courage, vulnerability, shame, and empathy. Her main messages circle around the idea that owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do, and that you have to walk through vulnerability to get to courage. So what are FFTs? FFTs are a strategy to approach the new that exists in our lives. For the sake of young or delicate ears here or on Zoom, we'll say that FFTs stand for freaking first times. As she began her first podcast, she noticed that while she was excited about the podcast and committed to it, she also needed time to admit that the awkward, uncomfortable time comes right after the excitement and it feels awful. And I can tell you, this is her quote, I can tell you that if the definition of vulnerability is uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure, then being new at something is the epitome of vulnerability. How many of us can relate to this characterization of experiencing the new right now? It feels like first times and new are all around us. For example, perhaps you had the list of honors right on your, right on your um, whatever this is called, music stand. There you go. And then you forget the word music stand? Oh my goodness. <laughs> We know that the COVID-19 pandemic with each stage requires us to try new things and figure out what our new normal is. And perhaps in our personal life, we are trying to navigate a new routine to focus on our health or working on a new passion project or trying out retirement or even trying to navigate where we are comfortable taking off our masks. In the Jewish world, we are in the process of figuring out what new communal life will look like with new decisions and policies looking both to keep each person safe and to bring people together in person when possible. Here at Temple Beth Torah, there are now new versions of melodies during services, new personalities and leadership, new relationships to be built, new policies and visions and goals, and the list of new goes on and on and on. The new doesn't always feel awkward, but Temple Beth Torah was blessed by years of relationships and benefiting from the incredible talents of Rabbi Shulman. And I can say for myself, even though I think I'm a pretty good rabbi, I will admit I am certainly no Rabbi Shulman at this point. While discomfort can deter us from pursuing new goals, ideas, programs, and relationships, our tradition teaches us that some of the most important moments in our people, or for our people, come after one forges a new path. Some examples. In Lech Lecha, Abraham is told to leave his place of comfort, his home and the land of his ancestors, to go to a new place that God will show him. Throughout Moses' life, which we read about from Exodus all the way through to De De Deuteronomy, we read about how he shifted from being a, co a comfortable Egyptian prince to a new life shepherding in Midian, and then later taking on his first role as an executive leader of the people of Israel, who then took on the humongous task of leaving them, leading them out of Egypt and then taking them to the edge of the promised land. After the Second Temple was destroyed in 70 CE, 
the rabbis had to figure out what new ways they were going to be Jewish now that they could not make physical sacrifices. And they began the journey of determining new versions of personal and communal Jewish practice and prayer. In 1962, nearly 60 years ago, some young families decided to found Temple Beth Torah in the relatively recently incorporated farming community of Fremont, California. In 1972, nearly 50 years ago, Rabbi Sally Presand became the first female rabbi in the United States. These are just some of the key moments of new that transformed the trajectory of Am Yisrael, the people of Israel. And without them, our world, our Jewish tradition, and our community would not be the same. In one of the morning blessings, Yotzer Or, we recite, Uvtuvo mechadesh bechol yom tamid maase vereshit, ma rabu maasecha adonai. In your goodness, you daily renew creation. How great are your works, Adonai. While we don't always like when the new routines, practices, and ideas make our lives temporarily awkward and uncomfortable, this prayer reminds us that the things that we cherish exist because of renewal and change. New is so important that each moment in our traditional liturgy, we exclaim gratitude to God for it. Some of the newness we've experienced has been our choice, and some of it has been foisted upon us. Yet the challenges will come either way. The question is, what do we do when we reach the hard moments where we feel uncertain, afraid, or emotionally exposed? According to Dr. Brene Brown, she says, quote, sometimes we're afraid to name the experiences or feelings because we think naming them gives them power. And if we're feeling something hard or uncomfortable, the last thing we want to do is to give it power. Let me dispel this myth now with 400,000 pieces of data and, two, and 20 years of research. When we name and own hard things, it does not give them power. It gives us power." Unquote. Rather than thinking to ourselves that these icky feelings mean that the change is bad or that we are just not good enough to make it through, Naming when something is an FFT allows us to get through the hard parts and use self-compassion as we figure out who we are and who we want to be in our new normal. Dr. Brene Brown breaks the FFT strategy into three steps. Step one, normalize it. Say, oh, this is exactly how new is supposed to feel. This is uncomfortable because being brave is uncomfortable. Step two, put it in perspective. Say, this feeling is not permanent, and it does not mean that I suck at everything. <laughs> and step three, reality check our expectations. Say, this is going to suck for a while, and I'm not going to crush this right away, but then we'll get through it. We are each going through our own FFTs, whatever they may be, and we are going th through some FFTs together. We will have moments of joy and excitement, and we'll experience some of the hard parts of trying something new. What I know is that we will come out on the other side stronger and more vibrant than before. As your rabbi, I want you to know that I am here alongside you as we navigate the new together. Whether you want to talk about the FFTs that you're going through, or you just want to feel supported by your community, Temple Beth Torah is here for you, and I'm here for you. Let's experience this new together. Shabbat Shalom. I believe that there are some presentations from the Temple Beth Torah community Yeah, feel free. Okay. 
Rabbi Zoe, it is my honor to uh, be here tonight and to just share with you that you've lived through your first week, two Shabbat services, and I have to say that you have honored us with your beauty and your grace and your wonderful words of wisdom and your sense of just being genuine. And we so much appreciate that and value that as a community. Um, this has been a journey, but the journey continues and it's gonna be an exciting journey, but we have something for you for your office. I know you've gotten some things already, right? But this, this means that it is official. Thank you. Has the home lots of everything. Thank you so much. Here's a little box. Oh my gosh. You guys, I've never had a nameplate before. I think this is the kind of new where it doesn't have any. It doesn't have any negative effects. This is just exciting. Now you are definitely official. And you know, it's important. Thank you so much. One month ago, Jackie and I trekked down to San Jose Airport to meet Rabbi Zoe on her first trip to Northern California. Uh, since we had never met in person, only on Zoom, I wanted to make sure she would recognize us as the people meeting her, so I made a Welcome Rabbi Zoe sign. <laughs> I was standing just outside the security exit heading to baggage claim. As she came through the exit, Rabbi Zoe saw the sign, waved, came up to me, and said, I've never had someone meet me with a sign in an airport before. <laughs> that was her first souvenir of her California adventure. I'm going to go back a few months. We interviewed many wonderful candidates during the rabbinic search. We spoke with both experienced rabbis and soon-to-be new graduates and each candidate offered unique perspectives and experiences to what they would bring to their rabbinate. As we were preparing for all the different interviews, I noticed a quality in one of the ca candidates, an unconstrained, joyous, joyous enthusiasm about Judaism and life in both her writings and in her videos, and I wasn't the only one uh, on the committee that noticed that. I also saw that she was quite tech savvy since she had created a music video singing three-part harmony with herself. <laughs> of course, being enthusiastic and joyful aren't the only qualifications for being selected as a new rabbi. Others include studiousness, knowledge, and compassion. Throughout the interview process, Rabbi Zoe met and exceeded the criteria we were looking for. And as the committee narrowed down the field of candidates, the tables were turned and we had to start selling TBT to the candidates, including a virtual tour of the facility. But finally, the search committee made our selection and an offer letter was prepared, but would it be accepted? The HUC had set March 2nd at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern as the time for when an offer could first be extended to a graduating student. Sharon and Ronnie were ready to call at exactly 8 a.m. We wanted to get to her first. And at 8.07 a.m., Sharon sent the committee a note. The news is good. She said yes. Yes was in all caps, four <laughs> exclamation points. The next couple months went by quickly and Rabbi Zoe's enthusiasm never wavered through the contractual discussions, discussions about the Bay Area and TBT, and the questions she posed to us were always thoughtful and researched. All right, to be honest, her introduction to housing in the Bay Area, and Fremont in <laughs> specifically, didn't quite engender as much joy, but she did find a very nice place eventually. So this brings us back to a month ago. When, I, when we picked her up at the airport. It was a pleasure to finally meet in person and start the process of getting to know her. Tired as she was from a long travel day, I met someone eager to get started on the tasks at hand. 
which that day included picking up her car, which had gotten delivered to TBT a few days earlier, getting into her new apartment, and then really important, where the grocery store was for dinner. <laughs> During the month of June, she got to explore the Bay Area, made trips to Napa, San Francisco, Santa Cruz, Half Moon Bay, and who knows where else, and settled into her apartment once her furniture arrived. We even tried to welcome her with a small earthquake, but she didn't feel it. She wasn't home at the time. All right, little bio. Rabbi Zoe graduated magna cum laude from the University of Michigan with a degree in women's studies. During her time at HUC, at HUC, she was a rabbinic intern at Hazon Detroit, the student rabbi for Temple's Beth Sholem in Marquette and Beth Israel in Bay City, Michigan, and a religious teacher at Isaac M. Wise Temple in Cincinnati. She also served as, uh, has a strong interest in social justice issues and volunteered the past few years with women, women Helping Women in Cincinnati. From the references we received and the comments on our Facebook posts about her joining TBT, we know that she has left a lasting positive impact on all the organizations she's been affiliated with. Last Friday evening, Rabbi Zoe led our congregation in her first Shabbat service as our rabbi. With the beauty of song and spirit, we were reintroduced to the familiar prayers and melodies as Rabbi Zoe brought fresh perspectives and even a couple of new melodies to us. Also, who knew that Fremont was the Jerusalem of the East Bay, somewhere between Oakland and San Jose? <laughs> In her application's personal statement, Rabbi Zoe wrote, our world is filled with challenges that overwhelm even the strongest of hearts. There is so much that we do not know, but this should not hold us back from envisioning the better world we hope for, nor should it prevent us from taking steps down the path toward it. As we sing, study, reflect, build meaningful relationships, challenge our previously held beliefs, search for meaning, and try to better our actions, I believe we will find our way to the, that world if we go on the journey together. I look forward to that journey. Cheryl and Beth. Rabbi Zoe, many of us love the poetry of Alden Solovoy, and we hope you do too, because we have this for your desk, but we'd like to read it so everyone could hear it first. So we're turning the tables a little bit on you about a simple meditation about why God called your soul to earth and what it says about the choices you made. Summon to the world. Something you do will resonate throughout eternity. This is why you are here, to touch time with your soul, to create ripples in the flow of our days. You were summoned to the world by God's will. Holiness aspires. The work of your hands, the divine requires the prayers of your heart. Create beauty, spread love, embody kindness, do justice, pursue peace. Always knowing that the moment of your life, summoned by eternity, the moment of your life, without which the universe could not stand, is a secret in heaven and on earth. And this matches your desk plate. Thank you so much. Virtual hug. hug. <laughs> I don't forget the virtual. We'll do a little distance. We take this moment now first to sit in the joy and blessing and community that we just experienced. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for the gifts. I'm so excited to put them on my desk and to hold them in my heart. And
and among other things that we're holding in our hearts, we think of those who are in need of healing, healing of body, healing of spirit. If you are thinking of somebody who's in need of healing at this moment, please feel free to share their names aloud or in your heart as my hand passes towards you. For all those names that we've said aloud and those we keep in our hearts, please feel free to join me in the words of Misha Beirach, which can be found on page 371. Continue on page 586 for the words of Alinu. Please rise. Alinu eshabeach la don hakol la teit gedula liotzer breishit shelo asanu kego yeha aratzot velo samanu kemish bechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegoralinu kechol hamonam. Anachnu korim, umishta havim, umodim, leaf ne melech, malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, venemar, vehayadonai, le melech al kol bayom hahu. Bayom hahu i Adonai echad Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo echad Please be seated.
when I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men who wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me and the people I, I've known and loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not in your mind. You can love me best by letting hands touch hands and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of, lo of me is love, give me away. At this moment, we think of those who have passed during this time and years past. Our Temple Beth Torah community remembers the following people. Bernard Biederman, remembered by Alan Weiner. Blanche Cohen, mother of Jeffrey Cohen. Rodney Corbett, brother of Arnold Corbett. Jack Alfont, remembered by Betty Rogoff. Phyllis Elkaim, remembered by Suzanne Corbett. Mattison Gore, brother of Verona Gore. Olga Heiss, remembered by Joan LaBelle DeMar. Rita Kahalis, mother of Susan Toth. Annette o Ohion, mother of Mrs. Ramon de Giacomo. Michelle Pasinski, father of Vladimir Pasinski. Brana Plitt, remembered by Paulina Spector. Robert Smith, father of Kenneth Smith. Hyman Weisenfeld, remembered by Nancy Weisenfeld. And Joseph Temener, father of Terry Harrow. If you are remembering anybody who is not on this list, we take a moment to hold those names in our hearts. And we continue with the words of Mourner's Kaddish on page 598. Please rise. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba be'alma divrach yirute ve'amlich malchute be'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye dechol be'it Yisrael ba'agala uv'izman kariv v'imru amen yehe shme rabba mevorach le'olam ulame almaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit ba'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shme dekudja v'richu Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechemata, da'amiran be'alma v'imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemayim, v'chayim alinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom v'imru mav, hu ya'ase shalom, alinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Please be seated. Oh, say shalom be Shalom, 
Pleasure to invite up our trusty president to share words of announcement. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Following tonight's service, the social hall will be open so you can browse the remaining books from Rabbi Shulman's collection. You're welcome to take any that interest you. There are Judaic and non-Judaic books. You need to be masked to enter. Please use hand sanitizer before going in, and please limit to only 10 people in the room at one time. This Sunday is the ice cream meet and greet for Rabbi Zoe at 1 p.m. We look forward to seeing all those who have RSVP'd. And sorry, registration for this event has already closed. There will be dining tents available for shade for those who will need to get out of the sun. Please dress appropriately for the expected temperatures. Masks are mandatory and TBT COVID guidelines will be enforced. Join us next week on Friday, July 16th for our multi-access outdoor Shabbat service at 7.30. Registration is required to attend in person and more details about how to register for services will be coming in the next few days. But if you can't wait, go to the services and registration page under worship on our website. Masks are mandatory and TBT COVID guidelines will be enforced and no registration is necessary to attend on Zoom. TBT is once again partnering with Jewish Family Services of Silicon Valley to collect backpacks and school supplies for preschoolers through adult learners. Like last year, the fundraiser will be 100% online. With your help, these students will be off to a great start to a successful 2021-22 school year. The Equip to Learn Backpack Drive will run from July 1st through July 23rd. Check the weekly email for a link to additional info. And WTBT has traditionally hosted a spring fundraising event to support their many donations to the community. This year, instead of hosting an in-person event, they are doing a Count Your Blessings fundraiser. Donations are being accepted through the end of July, and you can find a link to additional details in the weekly email or on our website. Save the date of July 24th. We will be having an event to honor Jill Zyman for all her years of service to TBT, and details will be coming shortly. Mazel tov to Josh and Becca on their engagement. And thanks to Michelle Eisenbrook and Jack Samoski for representing the worship committee tonight, Greg Revenscroft for providing the audio equipment, and the entire transition committee for the special t presentations this evening. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. We take a moment to say some extra blessings because we are so blessed. We start off with family blessings. So if you are here with some family, I encourage you to reach out to them. Unless they have cooties, then that's fine. You can <laughs> continue to maintain distance. And we say, Yivarechacha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yichuneka. Yisa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God bless you and keep you. May God's light shine upon you. And may God be gracious to you. May you feel God's presence within you always and may you find peace. And together we sing, Amen. And we continue. Ah, uh, yes, we do have some kiddush. It was hiding behind the candles for me. So, 
The words of Kiddush can be found on page 123. Thank you. Baruch Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav Veratzevanu Veshabbat Kodcho Veahava Uvratzon Hinechilanu Zikaron Lemaase Vereshit Ki Huyom Tehila Lemikra Ekodesh Zecher letziat mitzrayim Kivanu vacharta Veotanu kiddashta Mikohamim Veshabbat kotshecha Behahava uvratzon Hinchaltanu Baruch atah Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat L'chaim We continue with the Motsi Ooh, beautiful Let's show the Let's show the audience. Everybody can see. It's very pretty. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz B'Teh Avon Wonderful. We will take a little bit later. And we will close out this evening with the most traditional Jewish banger I've ever heard. It's my favorite. We are closing with Vishamru on page 162. Vishamru Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.